Happy New Year and welcome back to Vintage Camera Digest. Today we're going back to 1971 to take a look at a camera that I believe is one of the best ways to get into medium format photography, the Yashica Mat 124G. And I'll be sharing my thoughts on this cool little external meter, the Astrohori AH-M1. So stick around. <laughs> Yashica first started producing TLRs back in the early 50s, and they basically had two distinct lines of cameras. The first group used a knob to wind the film, usually sported Yashimar or Yashikor lenses, and were considered budget models. The second, more upscale group used a crank to wind the film that would automatically stop at the next frame, and generally used the higher-end four-element Yashinan lenses. This group debuted in 1957 and was the Yashica Mat line. Now, even though TLRs were falling out of favor by the early 1970s, Yashica was one of only a few companies that were still finding success with this design. And their ultimate, most advanced model was the Yashica Mat 124G. And despite the proliferation of 35mm SLRs, this camera sold successfully enough to be produced all the way to 1986. The 124G is a modern all black design. However, you will notice that my 124G is not all black. A few years ago, I decided it would look really cool with gold iridescent leatherette. And I don't think I was wrong. But I don't know that I would do that again because the original covering was an absolute nightmare to remove. The shutter speeds range from one second to one five hundredth of a second and are controlled by this dial. The f-stops range from 3.5 to f22 and are selectable by this dial. As I mentioned before, the taking lens is a 4-element 80mm Yashinan, and it's quite sharp, especially when stopped down a bit. But of course, one of the drawbacks of using a TLR is that you're basically stuck with one lens, unless you're using one of the Mamiya TLRs. But Yashica had a solution. And just as they did with their Electro 35 rangefinders, they offered wide and tele auxiliary lens sets. These will come with a taking lens and a small viewing lens they attach via the bayonet mount. When you're putting one of these on, make sure you put the viewing lens on first. Doesn't that look impressive? The wide angle reduces the focal length by about 25% to equal about a 58mm lens. And the telephoto increases the focal length by about 50% to equal about a 113mm. The literature that came with the lenses recommends using them at apertures from 5.6 to f11 for best results. And from my experience, they do really well when you stick to those apertures. Additionally, the camera features an uncoupled meter powered by a one3 volt mercury battery. And of course, that's not available anymore, but there are suitable replacements. However, the meter on this camera doesn't work anymore, and that's the reason I'm trying out this. This is the Astrohori AH-M1. And the fine folks over at pergear.com let me borrow this to test it out. It's brass with a black finish, but they also have a silver version. It mounts onto a hot or cold shoe, and this thing is tiny. It's got a built-in battery that charges via USB, and it will take about 40 minutes to do a complete charge. Its angle of measurement is about 30 degrees and has a metering range of EV1 to EV22. The aperture range is F1 to F32, and the shutter speed range is 1 8,000th of a second all the way down to 30 seconds. The ISO range is from ISO 5 to 6400, so it'll cover most film speeds. You can also set an exposure compensation to plus or minus three stops, and you can use it in either shutter priority or aperture priority mode. The controls are pretty simple. There's one button and one adjustment dial. You press the button once, and a meter reading is taken. And you can use the adjustment dial to shift the parameter, the shutter or f-stop, of the mode that you have set. And once a reading is taken, it'll display for about 30 seconds before it'll power off. You can also set it to meter continuously if you want, but basically, you're switching between modes and settings using double clicks of various speeds. Uh, for example, if I wanted to change from a single reading to continuous metering, just hold the button down for about a second. 
but for my use, I'll keep it on single metering mode since that's how most handheld meters work, and I'm used to that. Another cool feature is that the shoe mount is movable. On some older rangefinder cameras, the shutter selection dial is right up against the hot or cold shoe. So if you have a camera like that, you can loosen the shoe mount on the meter with the included Allen key and just slide it over so that it doesn't get in the way of the shutter dial. Like I said, very cool. So I'm excited to test this out along with the camera. And to do that, we're headed to Huntington Beach, South Carolina and the Adelaide Castle. So I will see you out there. So today I'm out at Huntington Beach, South Carolina and the castle behind me is Adelaide Castle, built in 1931. It's a very interesting architecture. Um, I have the Sheikah Mat 124G out here as well as this little meter, the Astrohori. So our intentions are twofold today. We're gonna run a couple of rolls of film through this nice TLR and we're gonna test the meter just to see how that works out. I have my spot meter with me as well, so I'll be testing that against the meter, um, you know, just to see how accurate it is and how well it works. I've got some 400 speed T-Max in the camera and uh, ready to get going. So let's get some shots done. So for the first shot, I'm gonna utilize this little pool here with some of the reflections and maybe some reflections of this tree. Yeah, so we'll see how that works out. I don't wanna to get too much sky in there because the sky is sort of, I don't know, it's over, overly bright and I think it would just wash out. So I wanna to try to keep the sky to a minimum out here today, but we shall see. So we've got the shot lined up here and let's see what the little meter is telling us. It says one two fiftieth of a second at F16 at ISO 400. I don't know. That sounds, that doesn't sound exactly right. That sounds like a little too much aperture for that or a little too little. So let's check it by the spot meter. Let's do a highlight and shadow and average the two. All right, so let's see, there's a highlight spot and I'm measuring off of a darker cloud. All right, so I need to find the shadow spot. Trunk of this tree, put that in memory. Let's average the two. It's telling me 1 250th of a second at F11. So I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll shoot one at F11 and we'll shoot one at F16 like the little meter says. And we'll go F11 first. All right, we'll wind that and we'll do F16. All right, let's lock the shutter so I don't accidentally trip it. Let's find our next shot. <clears throat> All right, so I've got another shot lined up here. Uh, I've got these two windows with the bars and this nice little palm tree right here to the side. It's gonna be nice and square. Haven't got a whole lot of sky in. Um, the meter is telling me here, one two fiftieth of a second at F13. So I'm gonna round that down to about F11. We'll take one and then I'll do a spot meter test to see how close we might be. Ah, this thing sure is quiet. Barely know it's taking a photo. These TLRs are just excellent. All right, let's check that with a spot meter and see if there's any difference. I have moved to the sunny side of the building or the sunnier side, let's say. I'm gonna read right off the rocks right there. So this is telling me one two fiftieth of a second at eight and a half, which is just a little bit more than we had. So I'm gonna also shoot it at that, just to make sure we get something to use. And done. A lot of cool architecture over here. 
So like there's some nice short lighting that way. Let's head over there and see what we can find. So 250 at F14. Let's check this here. I don't have a lot of highlights in here. But it's about F11 and a half really for the spots. So I'm going to expose for the shadow side of this. We've got F8 there. So I'm going to shoot one at F8. Still at 1 250th of a second. All right. Now let's go with what the meter is telling us. I'm going to shade the meter just a bit just to keep it from getting a lot of the sky in there. All right, 250 at F14, so I'm going to look at it. See, so that's between F11 and F16. All right. That's what the meter's telling me, F13. So we'll go with that, 1 250th of a second at F13, or, at, or between 11 and 16 at least. All right. I'm going to overexpose to F11. All right, and again. So quiet. So I'm gonna put the wide angle auxiliary lens on and get a shot of this exterior here. Hoping for some symmetry. All right, so after putting the wide angle adapter on or the wide angle auxiliary lens, looks like I've got the coverage that I want for this. Just need to level this thing up. Now, one thing to be aware of when using these auxiliary lenses is that the viewing lens that they give you with these are pretty bad. I mean, if you look at the size of the optic of the taking lens versus the viewing lens, you'll see that there's a lot more glass on the taking lens. Uh, but physically, it's just, they would not be able to make the viewing lens just as good as the taking lens. Well, because it would just take up too much space. So, the viewing lens is very dark and soft around the corners. It's maybe almost symmetrical. I may have to cheat that a little when we scan. All right, 250 at F11 is what this meter's telling me. And looking like two, about 250 at F11. So I'll do one at F11 and one at F8. All right, first we'll do F11. All right. Very good. And F8. All right. Good job. So this has got a lot of depth. It's nice. And we've got this curve coming up from the bottom of the frame that sort of leads our eyes back into this area. And the lighting is really nice because it's not overly directional, but it is soft and directional. It's still not so overcast that it light just seems like it's coming straight down. All right, let's meter this up. Okay, so 1 250th of a second at F14 is what the little astrohorimeter is telling us. And it's about F11, so the meter's reading just a little hotter than that. All right, so let's go with one, as it's saying, F13. So again, I'm gonna go to F11 and fudge it just a little bit between F11 and F16, because in this camera, I can do that. Make sure I'm focused as best as I can. All right, let's do one. All right. 
And this one I'm doing at F11. But I do like this shot and I'm probably gonna bracket it once more as well. Are we already at frame 12? Put a new roll of film in, and we'll pick right back up here. All right, loaded back up with film, and we had an F16 or F13 and F11. I'm gonna shoot this at F8. All right, there we go. Let's try something with the telephoto attachment instead. Actually, let's not do the telephoto just because we're looking for a picture for that. Let's find a photo and then let's see which lens we need to make that the best photo we can. That's the better way to do it. All right, so the astrogorimeter one two fiftieth at f14. If I shade it just a little bit, do I get something different? No, I do not. One two fiftieth at f14. All right. Let's shoot one at that. Unlock the shutter. That's a good idea. All right. All right, so this I'm gonna meter with the spot meter just to see what the difference is, if there's much. It probably won't be much different. It's basically telling me 250th of a second at 11.2, which is really close to F14. So I am gonna at least drop it down to 11 and we'll go from there. So this meter is not too bad for these more or less evenly lit shots. Nice, all right, so let's find some detail shots. What if we get something right here on this corner? So I've got this corner in focus here and there's some windows in the back that I want to bring in as clear as I can for this shot. And then I may shoot it at a, uh, at a wider aperture just to get less depth of field. Ooh, I can shoot at F32. That's what I want to do, at least for one. So there's me a shadow point. Here is a highlight point. So I could go 1 30th of a second at 32. All right, let's try that. 1 30th of a second at F32. And then I'll come back and check it with the Astrahori meter. So with the Astrahori meter, it's telling me 1 40th of a second at F32, which is interesting because we've got some light coming in. That's fairly accurate, I would say. Let's do one with a shallower depth of field. <clears throat> so 500 is as far as I can go because I've got 400 speed. So it's telling me 1 500 at 5.6. So let's do that. So I was gonna try something with the wide angle, but uh, I don't think I need it. Uh, I just back the camera up a little bit and I've got this, we've got some nice direct sun coming in on this. Now we've got some nice detail shadows coming in at an angle. So I'm gonna grab this real quick. The Astra Hori meter is showing me 1500 at F9. So let's check that. One five hundred at F eight. 
which is not too far from F9, to be quite honest. Okay. Make sure I am unlocked. Good. Do like this shot. I'm going to bracket it a bit. I'm going to try it 5.6 as well. Let's do this. I want to shade it from the side here. So 1 500th to F11. I think that's going to overexpose it a bit, but it may not. So the spot meter is telling me 500 at F8. So let's do that. Now let's do one with the meter. That was 500 at F10. It's really only a stop difference. Or about a stop. Stop in a third, possibly. All right, we got a couple more shots. Let's see what we can find. You know, when you shoot, it seems like you become aware of the things that you're blind to. And one of the things that I've always been blind to are reflections. I tend to avoid puddles and water and that sort of thing. But if you look at this right here, we've got a mirror image of that castle in behind there. So if I shoot low enough, I should be able to get some sort of cool composition with that reflection. So what I'm saying is I'm getting better at seeing that sort of thing. So let's give this a shot. All right, then that's one two fiftieth at f eight and a half. Let's check that focus. All right. Drop it low, which is really good because we got this waste level finder. All right, so the deal about the Astrohori meter, I was running about one stop underexposed on everything. Not quite, but a little bit. So. And here's why I think that was. So last night before I packed everything up to come out here, I did a simple reflected metering test uh, using the spot meter as reference uh, on a gray fabric. And the, re and the spot meter was returning, let's say 11. And then if I used the Astrohori meter on that same spot, close in, it was telling me F8. So it was it was overexposing, not quite a stop, but at least two thirds of a stop. So I did a exposure compensation on the meter so that it would match what the uh, spot meter was reading. But out here, everything's been consistently underexposed by about that same amount. So if I had left the exposure compensation off or set to zero on the Astrohori meter, I might be getting results that pretty much match what my spot meter is giving me. So I've changed the exposure compensation on that meter to zero and we're just going to see how it matches now. I'm feeling like that's probably going to be a better deal. I'm feeling like that's probably going to solve that issue. All right, so over on the shady side of Adelaide, we have this nice palm frame and there is another palm tree behind it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna split, I'm gonna put the two palms in the middle of the frame with the out of focus palm in the center. So I'm using 100 speed film so I should be able to open wide and get a good exposure with that. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna check it with the Astrohori meter first. It says 160th at F4, which is probably about right. Let's see what we get with the spot meter. It's not a whole lot of a 
highlight here. It's all mostly mid-tones. And spot meter's telling me, yeah, it's about 1 60th of a second at F4. So that compensation that I took off of the Astrohori meter probably is gonna solve the problem. Not that it was a huge problem, but a little bit. It was consistently off. So, the, and, and one thing about that meter is once you set an exposure compensation, you don't get any indication that it's set on the little screen. It would be nice to see like an EC plus 0.6 or whatever on there to remind you that you do have an exposure compensation set. But once you set it and it goes back to the regular screen, that information goes away. So there's no way to really look at it and see that you have an exposure compensation set. It's hit, and that could be dangerous because I'm one of those people that will adjust an exposure compensation and still forget it even if it's right there in front of me. So you have to be vigilant. All right, we're gonna to go to F4. At 1 60th of a second. Let's do 3.5 as well. Just to bracket a little bit. All right. So the external meter is giving me 1 125th of a second at 7.1. So I'm gonna do that. I'm not gonna check it with the spot meter at this point because I sorta know what's going on with that. I will overexpose one stop as well, just to give us some bracketing. And I will do it at 5.6 as well. Got a couple more shots on this. Then we will head back to the condo and I'll process these next week. All right, so this nice little, I'm gonna shoot straight up through there. Well, I was really pleased with the results in general. I had some frame spacing issues, but I think that was only because of a very amateurish mistake. When loading the film, I wound it to the wrong start mark. I wound it all the way to the 24 exposure start mark instead of the 12 exposure mark. I loaded the first roll of film correctly, but that was done a few days ago. And then when I loaded new film in the field, I apparently forgot I'd ever used this camera before. Anyway, the start mark for 120 film is under the bottom, not the one in the back. So just be aware of that. I think the lens performed well and was satisfactorily sharp even when not stopped down. And the auxiliary lenses, at least the wide angle one, worked really well and didn't really degrade the overall sharpness of the image. But it did shoot mostly at around f8 and f11 when using it. There is a fair amount of barrel distortion with it and a slight vignette in the corners depending on what f-stop you're using, but nothing that would make me not use it again. It's a very useful accessory. But just remember, the image you see in the viewing lens is gonna be pretty bad. The only sharp area is in the middle. So you may have to focus and recompose if your subject isn't centered. But again, I applaud Yashika for offering that solution. By the way, the lenses use a standard bayonet mount and can be mounted on other TLRs that also have that same mount. Now there are just a couple of cons of TLRs that you'll have to contend with, and this is generally speaking and not specific to the Yashica Mat 124G. First is parallax error. The closer you get to the subject, the greater the disparity between the viewing lens and the taking lens is. The second is lens flare, or rather the inability to actually see the flare and judge its effect on the taking lens. In some of the shots where I was shooting into the light, I only noticed it once the film was developed, so it's probably best to always use a lens hood. It won't keep it from happening in every instance, but it will help in some. Now, let's talk about this little meter. I was quite surprised at how close it came to matching the spot meter results once I reset the exposure compensation to zero. And keep in mind that most of those spot meter results were averages of the highlight and shadow areas that I picked out of the subject. My only complaint is that if you set an exposure compensation, 
Once you have it set and it returns to the normal screen, there's no indication that any compensation is set. You just have to remember that you did it. But other than that, I was really impressed and I think I just might buy one of these for myself. It's really handy. If you're interested in picking one of these up, I will leave links where you can purchase one down in the description. And for the sake of transparency, I do receive a small benefit from Pergear if you use one of those links. So use one of those links. All in all, I think the Ashika Mat 124G is a great camera. And if you're looking at cameras to get started in medium format, this one should make your short list. And if you have one of these, I'm always interested in hearing feedback. So let me know what you think in the comments. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please hit that like button. And while you're at it, go ahead and subscribe too. Got a lot of good stuff coming up. See you next time.